this is Vol Force One, and I am beginning a new Coach Mode Dynasty. And this one is kind of special. Obviously, it's been a long time since I've posted anything. Like anyone else, I have a life, and it sort of took me away from really any opportunity to game whatsoever. But now I'm sort of back, and I came across, as many of you probably have, the College Football Revamped mod. And I am going to start a new Coach Mode Dynasty using the College Football Revamped mod. And I have to just, first of all, give a lot of credit to the people over there at the College Football Revamp team. They have done some amazing work. First of all, they took some of the teams that, quite frankly, have just sort of fallen to the bottom of the FBS world, such as, like, Idaho dropped out. So they have replaced Idaho with Appalachian State. They've taken New Mexico State who also withdrew from the Sun Belt Conference, and they're now sort of in the no man's land of the uh, of FBS. And they've been replaced. They have also replaced, I think they were, um, I don't remember who replaced them, but somebody, you know, took their spot. Um, they took out UMass. They took out Connecticut. And they've replaced them with some of the teams like Georgia Southern, uh, Appalachian State, as I mentioned. A um, couple of, oh, uh, Coastal Carolina, which if you're looking at the screen right now, you'll see that's the team I'll be starting with, and also Charlotte. So it's really kind of cool what they've done. It, and, it, and they've also, they're in the process right now at the time of this recording of replacing uh, or updating uniforms. Just for an example, the Tennessee uniforms have been updated to the one to the Nike that they wear now in 2020. And uh, I actually... In mine, I, uh, I did a little modifying myself. I prefer, as a Tennessee fan, I really like the uniforms they wore in 2016, 17, 18, where you had the single stripe with, at the, on the pants with the checkerboard. So I replaced the pants myself for Tennessee. Also the helmet that had the checkerboard at the bottom of the stripe. So I've made my own modif you know, Well, those are really the only modifications I've made. The rest of the work is all them, and it's unbelievable what they've done. And it really kind of inspired me when I came across it to, you know, restart my coach mode uh, play on NCAA 14. And so that's what I'm doing here. Um, as you can see, I am the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, who, of course, play in the Sun Belt Conference. I will be beginning as the offensive coordinator. And this is another career coach mode dynasty. This is just where I'm starting. Eventually, you know, I'll, I'll move on from Coastal Carolina and take a either an other offensive coordinator position or maybe a head coaching position at a smaller school. I really want this to kind of be a, uh, to follow the pattern of any other coach in college football, you know, they begin at the bottom and work their way up. So that's the plan with this coach. Uh, I've named this coach, coach Jace Evans. He is entirely fictional. There is no such person that I'm aware of. Obviously there's probably a Jace Evans out there somewhere. But uh, I've created him, and he uh, his alma mater was Tennessee. So I'm playing this game as if he is a former Tennessee volunteer quarterback who is uh, has joined the coaching profession and hopes to someday work his way up and back, maybe to his alma mater and take Tennessee on or whoever uh, to glory. But right now I'm starting with Chanticleer or with the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina. And you'll also notice that it says preseason 2020. And you might be thinking, oh, well, you must have simmed ahead to the 2020 season. That is not accurate. Uh, the, the team over at the uh, College Football Revamped Mods have created a file, <clears throat> a modification that allows you to begin in the 2020 season in NCAA 14. So I thought that was kind of cool rather than having to sim or play the 2013 season with 2020 rosters because the college football revamp mod does automatically update the rosters to the 2020 rosters so with this modification i am starting the 2020 season with the 2020 rosters and so i that's to me that is pretty cool that's one of the reasons that i'm doing this it's almost like i'm playing ncaa 2021 <laughs> So um, also I found a file that adds the 2021 recruiting class. 
as there's a one of the members there has created this file that updates I think it adds 40 of the uh, top recruits for this upcoming recruiting class into the game where you can recruit them obviously with the with Coastal Carolina I'm probably not going to be able to sniff any of those guys but it's still kind of cool to have them in the game so that's what I've done now moving on looking at uh, what I'm how my dynasty is set up first of all I play coach mode right so let's look real quick at the house rules um, I play on all American that gets you the most in my experience gets you the most realistic results with coach mode uh, um, injuries are on fatigue is on quarter length is at nine minutes again that gets me usually around 120 plays a game, depending on how fast each team's you know calls the plays. I might actually lower that to eight minutes while I'm the offensive coordinator because the computer, when you when it um, sims, when it does the auto sim, when you're when the defense is on the field, uh, it take they run plays a lot faster. So I might drop that to eight minutes. We'll see. I'll probably see how the first couple of results go uh, with the number of plays anyway. But as of right now, it's at nine minutes. Play cock, of course, is on. Game speed is normal for now. I have the minimum speed threshold at the bottom. I want the fastest players. I, I want there to be a disparity between speed. That may get adjusted a little bit as we go. But right now, uh, I have it at zero. And I'll just tell you that is not for my advantage because the team that I'm going to be uh, playing with to begin will have a have a very large speed disadvantage I uh, have the home field advantage on and and the uh, ice the kicker also is on looking at the game rules these are some settings that I found somewhere in the past I don't even remember where I got these I'm pretty sure it's operation sports and you might notice the in intentional grounding is at 75 that might also be uh, adjusted it it uh, that kind of which is it's odd but what a lot of players have found is that this actually adjusts the way the ai calls their plays and then also has some adjustments on uh, zone and man pass coverage so i have it at 75 right now that may change but as of right now 75 again the idea there if it does change it's not really to give me an advantage or take an advantage away it's just to increase the realism for coach mode uh, looking at the custom AI, um, they are almost the same for uh, CPU and man or, and the uh, the user. Um, quarterback accuracy is at five because it's the quarterback accuracy is way overblown in, in NCAA 14. I think if you've played, you know that. Um, pass blocking at 55, wide receiver catching. Again, they're mostly the same because they want uh, the idea is that it's you know when you call plays it's the same for you as it is for the cpu so that's and i and i all i do i play coach mode so i call the play and the players run it uh, i've never been much of a thumb jockey when it comes to playing ncaa 14. so i just call the plays and let the computer to me that gives me the best experience all right everybody's different but uh, i'm like anyone else if i'm playing a game i'm playing to win so if I'm playing as the quarterback, I am going to drop back 50 yards and then launch the ball 80 yards downfield. I'll roll out. And um, I just prefer the more realistic experience. Uh, I also, I like to play a game where I don't have all of the advantages over the CPU that, you know, that the CPU might have or that I might have if I were playing um not in coach mode <laughs> so it, it just kind of levels things out and it makes me have to do better at the whole game for example i could probably take coastal carolina turn off coach mode and have a great deal of success against most any team but i i, I just like i just prefer the more realistic more balanced experience so i play coach mode um visual settings nothing crazy there so that is the setup for my dynasty um and uh, if you have any questions on that, you can let me know. I might be able to direct you to where I got my sliders, but I did not come up with them. I might have modified them a little bit over time, but uh, I stole them from somewhere in Operation Sports, probably, like most of you. And so that's uh, that, that's what gives me the, mo the funnest experience. 
Uh, I told you that the uh, 2020 schedule has been uh, put in to this dynasty. And real quick, I'll show you the Chanticleer dynasty as of, or schedule as of now. This was the pre-COVID dynasty. I'm pretending, as is most everybody else, like when they when they play NCAA 14, that COVID never happened. And uh, as we probably wish it didn't in real life. Um, but what I have done... So uh, originally, week four, I was supposed to play against an FCS team. I don't like playing FCS teams. To me, it's a waste of time. It's an easy win. I want to challenge. And I want to be one of the teams that challenges the program. So I have made week four. Uh, Tennessee also was playing an FCA, uh, FCS opponent. So I replaced my FCS opponent with a road game at Tennessee. So week four, we will be going into Knoxville. I'm playing the Volunteers, and so that uh, you know be a good challenge for us. Um, but as you can see, the you know, Coastal Carolina playing in the Sun Belt Conference, and you can notice that the logo, the Sun Belt logo, has been updated to the current Sun Belt Conference logo. Again, some of the great work done by the College Football Revamp Mod people. Uh, and we have a full Sun Belt Conference schedule. You can see I've got Appalachian State on the schedule. I have Georgia Southern on the schedule. So um, it's a difficult schedule when you consider the fact that it's a we're a Sun Belt team. So we've got I think eight games against Sun Belt opponents, who obviously are going to be weak. And so um, outside of the conference, we're playing South Carolina and Tennessee from the Southeastern Conference, and then we have a home game against Kansas from the Big 12. So we are stepping out, playing some some Power Five teams. Looking at my coaching style, that would be the next thing I wanted to look at. I, I'm an air raid team, and so if you've watched any of my videos in the past, uh, we throw the ball a lot. And we I, I kind of pattern my offense after the, the Mike Leach version of the air raid. We play mostly 10 personnel, meaning one running back, no tight ends, mostly four wide receivers. Um, and... The run pass offense, it's its reversed from the way it, it's kind of supposed to be <laughs> in uh, NCAA 14. I'm going to throw the ball as much as I can. I have it set to 85%. Obviously, when you're when you're calling the plays in-game, these settings aren't overly important, but that's um, that's my general philosophy. I, of course, turned off my all of my recruiting scholarship and visit assistance off, although right now I'm really kind of worried about offense right scoring points moving the ball i will be recruiting uh and recruiting you know to try and be successful but i'm not really recruiting to build a program i'm recruiting to get my offense moving the ball and scoring because that's why i'm here so uh when i'm the head coach at some program i'll worry more about um recruiting although again i'm not just going to entirely disregard it um we will real quick i'll just kind of show you uh, our playbook. So the I call it the Jer Raid. My name is Jeremiah, so that's the idea. <clears throat> it's the Jer Raid instead of the Air Raid. And uh, my base set, it'll be the first formation that comes up when I'm in games, will be the spread flex, right? That's the basic set of the, um, the Air Raid offense. Spread flex and spread flex weak. When I go three by one or three receivers to one side, I'll usually either the tray four wide receiver sets or the trips open, which is three and left. And the idea there is, is I'm moving the uh, H and uh, Z positions across the field. That's how the air raid generally works. And I won't go into that too in depth, but everything's out of the shotgun. Um, I have almost no formations with tight ends. I do have a couple in there. Um, I have these. These are mostly for short yardage position or situations, and these are also formations that uh, closely resemble ones that Mike Leach has used specifically. At, he used these these two here, the twin tight end slot. He used these more at Washington State, and I say more. He would, he would maybe use them four times a game, um, as I, I have done quite a bit of watching old Washington State footage. Uh, we do have some two-back sets in there because he does use the two-back set quite a bit, maybe 20% he'll call from the two-back sets. And then uh, from his Texas Tech days, he used a couple of double tight end sets uh, on the goal line. 
where he would have two tight ends uh, on each end of the offensive line, or he would use this, what he called the slot formation, where he'd have two tight ends to one side. But for the most part, we are going to um, be running you know, four receiver, one running back sets. That'll probably be where 80 to 75% of our offense will be called out of, which means receivers are important. So with that said, now that you have a general idea of the style of play that we're going to employ, we're going to look now at our depth chart. Well, let's go to the red shirt players. I feel like this is a better place to look at the roster. This team is not very good. And <laughs> the worst the worst part is that they are not built to run the air raid offense. This is Grayson McCall. He's my start, he'll probably be my number one quarterback. He's you know he's he he will be challenged by uh, Fred Payton, who is a junior and does have a little bit higher awareness. Um, but both of these guys are more scramblers than they are passers. Mike Leach typically uses your classic drop back passer, but as you can see, these guys are more kind of runners. Um, Carpenter, who's a junior, may get some time. He's he's in the mix, but when you go and look at the throw power, throw accuracy, he's not quite as accurate as McCall. Um, and then even with like awareness, yeah, he's he's a little he, his his 72 awareness puts him below both. So it's a three. It, these are three quarterbacks that don't really fit what I do. <laughs> so I've got to try and figure out an offense. Uh, figure out how to score with these guys. Um, and then you leave the quarterback position, and you really, like, this team could pull back. They, they could bring back the Me Too movement because they are going to get abused in pretty much every game. Um, my running back is okay, Marable. Uh, he, he's an 84 overall, but he's really slow. And that also does not really fit. The, the air raid offense typically uses what you would call scat backs, the smaller, faster guys. And this guy's not very fast. And so he does have good agility, good agility, good acceleration, and good awareness. So that helps him. He'll, he'll be somewhat productive. But he won't fit the offense kind of like we would like for him to. Fullback, we don't really use fullbacks. Wide receivers, also not very good. Um, <laughs> highly, high lie, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Forgive me, uh, Coastal Carolina fans. He's only an 81 overall. And only a 77 speed, so I really don't anticipate much production out of him. Um, where is the release rating? I must have passed it. No, here it is. 83 is not terrible, but you but after highlight, who is not again, not that good. But look at the rest. Like these guys cannot get off the line of scrimmage, um, and they're you know we know they're not really that great at receiver. So we're we're in big trouble. <laughs> running our offense so you think well maybe you can call more two tight end sets well likely is okay but after that again you've got a pretty significant drop off on the offensive line well we're not very good either 70 you have an 80 at uh, left tackle and 82 at right guard but the rest are pretty well below 80 and they're so yeah offensively we're not gonna be very good defense i'm not even gonna worry about defense because i'm i'm not the defensive coordinator um hopefully though they do run a three three five or three three four or sorry yeah three four because defensive tackles are i only have three and they're not very good so i've not really red shirted very many of these players because i don't really see the point in red shirting guys who are not good anyway i'm going to end up cutting most of these guys hopefully we recruit well enough to where we can cut some of these like i am i am red shirting this guy beasley my plan is to just move him to the fullback slot so that i don't because you know you have to you have to have a fullback on the roster so eventually my plan is to move Beasley there to kind of occupy that spot. He'll never see the field. He's too slow and he's not any good. So, you know, I'll probably, you know, he's he's a guy that he's he's here just as kind of a to fill to round out the numbers. So, that's what I'm dealing with depth chart wise. So, let's dive into kind of the whole point of this video. And again, this I'm not going to play any games today. This is just doing the preseason, just setting it up. So let's real quick look at our recruiting board. Uh, like anyone else, I typically go and search for um, the guys who have me in the top three. 
that's where I start and we'll look at them um, yeah three star caliber is not bad uh, and I do you tend to use the uh, the squat cheat right <laughs> 4.82 is a little slow for a linebacker for me. I usually over recruit at free safety to fill those spots anyway. Um, I am going to target Ross, this tackle, and probably these defensive ends. Well, Kennedy. He's got a very good 40, well, a decent 40 for a three star defensive end. I got to be careful when I say very good. None of these guys are going to particularly be that good. Uh, so now let's see outside linebacker 460. That's pretty good. Well, he's only one star. So no, I'm not targeting him um, Two star defensive tackle yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna go after him um, Defensive end from Texas that's probably good because I, I would like to I'm not a guy who really looks at the pipeline too much, but I, if I can get a tight line, a pipeline to Texas, I'll take it. Because obviously Texas is one of the best recruiting states. Uh, let's look at 40 times. Um, yeah, I got a three-star receiver, a couple three-star receivers with under a four or five oh forties. I'll take those. Again, you got to redefine really what your, <laughs> you know, what your. Uh, Looking for when you are a two-star school, Coastal Carolina is obviously not a very good team. Uh, cornerbacks, I don't like taking any any skill position over four five zero speed, but we'll oops, uh, we'll go ahead and target these guys because just trying to you know just trying to really improve our current roster right now that's our main goal uh athletes no athletes are interested in me that's kind of that's a bummer added seven prospects to the board that's that's about right <laughs> uh let's first of all also go look at my team needs what do i need uh well i need receivers that's true in multiple for multiple reasons um i'll we'll go back and look at receivers in a moment um, defense we do need a punter Can't, I got a junior kicker but we're gonna need a punter so I'll go recruit a punter I need free safeties and I need I do need defensive tackles I have only have three on the roster I have their <laughs> freshmen and two sophomores so all right let's go search uh, last time I said top three, let's expand that to top five. See if that brings up anyone else that might help the team. We know we needed a punter, so let's see if we got any punters up there. Ugh, one star. I don't like recruiting any. I don't like recruiting anything below a three star. They have to have something that makes me want them if they're a two star. But I definitely don't want to recruit any one star. So let's table the punter position for now. I need receivers. Let's see what I got. I got a one star with a 440. All right. I might scout him just to see. Let's put him on the target list for now. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't like I don't like putting a one star on my target list. But a 440. That's a high for a that's high for you know I'm gonna take him off. You know, I'd rather have a decent I'm going to have a 454 three star than a 440 one star. All right, so what else? What are my other team needs? Center. Let's see what we got center wise. Center will. Oh, none. I have no centers with me in their top five. That's bad news whenever I need a center. But this is the pains of taking over a, a tiny program, right? If it's a tackles, let's see what I got. Uh, he's a Juco sophomore you know what? I don't care about defense that's the defensive coordinators problem so I'm gonna put him on the target list what else do I need uh, I am recruiting a couple defensive ends so I could slot one of those into the tackle if I needed to All right free safety I need free safety let's look at free safety 
sorted by 40 time and yeah this is a sad list right here there is no free safeties that excite me uh yeah that's not good but i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and target this guy i've added one let's go to top 10 schools just to see if that helps at all <laughs> that added two players Oy vey. all right let's go to center still no centers won me free safety not much added in for the free safeties. All right. So, all right. Bad news. That's bad news. Uh, let's go to my target list and scout everybody I've got on there. See what I can do here. Look at my board. Uh, 10%. Oh, my word. Scouting is not going to help much. My head coach has very little in the way of recruiting uh, coach skills, I guess. And I'm not really learning much. Because at a 54 free safety, that's just not good. Alright, so I'm going to go back. This is my system. I'm not going to pretend to be like a recruiting genius. But for now, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna do the lock percentage thing. Oops, not to the board. To the search. Take this off. Uh, we're gonna go less than 25% locked. Obviously, a lot of matches there, and we're gonna just gonna go with the bottom lock percentage. Yeah, this is, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to get any of these guys. Let's let's narrow it down a little bit. Let's go with let's go ahead and use the pipeline. I'm usually not for this. I usually don't pay attention to the pipeline, but just to kind of narrow down my search a little bit to get guys that I may have some hope of getting. Let's um, first of all we need centers. I need a center, and let's sort by squat. All right, there's a guy who is a 61 overall, mm, 69 here. He's in Florida. He's got FAU on the top, so he's somebody that might be worth looking at. Only 16% lock. I'm gonna go ahead and add him to the list. He'll be my first center target. I just need one. All right. Uh, now let's go to punter because I need a punter. Yeah, I got a couple that I can deal with here. A couple three stars. I'm going to add both these guys just because I need punters. Uh, let's just look for some athletes. Athletes can be um, just because you can put, they can play a lot of different things. <clears throat> All right, there's a three star. I'll throw him in there. Yes, three star. I usually so when I take a team like Coastal Carolina, I'm the offensive coordinator. I don't need the number one class in the country. I'm only going to be here a couple of years. I'm really for my when I'm setting up my initial board. I don't go for the fences. I'll go for the guys later who are kind of left over, the four or five stars who aren't being record, recruited by anyone. I'll go for those guys. Um, but for this, I need warm bodies. I need decent players. So I look for guys in you know in the mid mid to upper 60s range who also will kind of hopefully fit what I do. Athletes are, you know, that's a good place to go. And uh, I, oh, we'll see where I am on their board. And then receivers was another position of need. Um, well, we got well, North Carolina right there, but he's got Alabama high on his list. But I'm going to go ahead and add him. And I'm going to add this guy, Scott Carroll. And tell you what, this video is starting to go kind of long. I'm going to keep going, but uh, you guys get the point of sort of what I'm doing here. Looking ahead um, with the next video, I will we'll be the first. We'll look at kind of how the re, you know my recruiting board went to start the year. And then we will look at, we'll, I'll show you the highlights of my first game. And that'll be in week two when we go to South Carolina. Can we be competitive against the Gamecocks? I don't anticipate that we will be, but hey.
maybe it'll be uh maybe i'll surprise i'll shock the world so this is vol force one signing off i will see you in the next episode